Party, welcome to all of you on this panel, uh, where we are going to discuss the future of TV broadcasting, or as many of say, many of you guys mean just broadcasting. So while TV remains the main medium of entertainment for families in India, a lot of us, even in this room, uh, would have cut the cord and have been using OTT services to watch content. So maybe if we can just do a small, you know, social experiment. Can I have a show of hand on how many of you watch content on OTT? That's everyone, right? And how many of you have TV in your household? Everyone. How many of you have a free dish in their home? Exactly. So, you know, so if we take sample, if this is my sample, then, you know, almost 100% people have TV in their home. Almost 100% people watch OTT content. And maybe 2 or 3% have free dish or OTT, right? But that's the thing about India, you know. Everything that we feel, uh, the average is always a problem. You can't average because 60% uh, of India lives in villages, right? So let me start. I mean, first, I, mean, I am Gaurav Laghate. I am a con consumer editor with Mint. And uh, with me, we have Mr. Gaurav Devedi, who is the CEO of Prasar Bharti. Mr. Anuj Gandhi, a former broadcaster, I would say, and now uh, a startup founder in Plug and Play Technology. Then Mr. Avinash Pandey, who is CEO of ABP News. Then Mr. Ravish Kumar, who has regional channels for Viacom IP. And Mr. Sunil Lulla. Uh, he is now consulting with a lot of businesses and uh, a veteran in the media and entertainment space, headed uh, multiple news as well as TV, as well as agencies, and previously CEO of BAR. Right? So first, if I may start with uh, Mr. Dwayri, what are your views on you know, free to air? Where is it going as a podcaster, as a public broadcaster? Where do you see this whole, uh, you know, TV future of TV going? Thank you, Gaurav. See, when we start talking about uh, the future of broadcasting, we need to start by understanding and appreciating where uh, broadcasting is coming from. And uh, I think from, from years we've been hearing uh, you know, any discussion on broadcasting or television, you know, invariably one of the first few references goes back to the Mahabharat where, uh, you know, Sanjay did a long distance uh, coverage of uh, the battle. And we've all heard that story, so I won't... Uh, spend too much time on the story, but if you want to get uh, technical about it, then it wasn't a broadcast. It was a, in a manner of speaking, uh, you could call it a closed uh, circuit kind of a coverage with a commentary for uh, Dhritarash, so he could not see what was happening. Or you could call it narrow casting, if you want to use today's terminology, where you are focusing only on one single audience, that is Dhritarashtra himself. Or when the Bhagavad Gita was being expounded upon, then chapter 11, when the Lord shows his uh, Virat Swaroop, even Dhritarashtra could not see it, only Arjun could see it, because the rest of them got that message, subscription only, you don't have the bandwidth. So, this whole idea of uh, broadcasting, narrow casting, subcasting, all of that, subscription models, free to air, <coughs> we are just putting in these terminologies, these technical terms now. But we've heard these stories before. And each time there is a new uh, step in the evolution of technology, I think one question which always gets asked is what happens to what was there before? When the printed word was invented, uh, the storytelling would die out. It hasn't yet. When the radio came about, it was uh, the books are going to die out. They haven't yet. They changed form, yes, but they haven't died out. When TV came, then it was the end of radio was proclaimed. 
And now when we are talking about digital and streaming and narrow casting, then everybody says that TV is going to die. It won't. There would be a shift of balance, yes, certainly. There's something which is, uh, some, some new mechanism is evolving. What's going to happen possibly is that uh, the ratios may change, but one crucial fact will always remain, and that is what is the kind of content that uh, the audience wants to consume? And what is the right mechanism uh, which any broadcaster, uh, whether it is a streaming service, whether it is a television service, pay TV, free TV, whatever, how do they produce the content? How do they most effectively and efficiently uh, take it to the audience? Um, Prasar Bharti has uh, its own platform, uh, Free Dish. And again, this question gets asked uh, many times. What business does uh, Prasar Bharti have running a free dish platform at all? And I think the answer lies uh, in the Prasar Bharti Act itself, where it says that Prasar Bharti's mandate is to carry information, entertainment, education to the people. And for the people who are producing the content, for the, for the channels, for the individual uh, producers, if they do not have a mechanism of taking that to the audience, then we would take it, we would provide that carriage to them. And as we've seen in the last uh, couple of months, there is still substantial demand uh, for the platform. Uh, if that demand did not exist, you know, you may, of course, at different times, people say that there is no demand, there is no one who doesn't see. In this camera, there are three people who just raised their hand, and there are two people who are in the middle. But if you go to the, uh, to the hinterland, and you know, our friends uh, from the channel, both here on the dais as well as in the audience, if they did not see that audience, if they were not convinced about the size of that audience, they would not be with us. I mean, for them, it's a commercial decision. But for Prasar Bharti, it's a matter of uh, living with the mandate and operationalizing the mandate that the parliament has given us. And therefore, taking all these things together, the evolution of technology, the evolution of mechanisms, the need for content, the need for the audience to consume the content, the need for a mechanism to bridge this gap between the producers and the consumers of content, I think Prasar Bharti's role, as well as the role of uh, broadcasting, is always going to remain, at least for the foreseeable future. Last, uh, I think, three months back, there was an article which I read. Uh, which said that uh, BBC is looking at uh, shifting to totally digital by 2030. So let's wait and see. If it's going to take uh, BBC about seven years, maybe it will take us 15. So maybe after about five years, we'll again sit down here and discuss what is the future of broadcasting. Right. And as you, as you spoke about the live telecast or narrow cast, you know, the, way, the way I see it, except for sports, which remains the only appointment viewing content. Everything else, people at least who, ha who can afford it, they want it at their convenience, right? When I want, where I want, how I want. In that sense, it seems sometimes to us that you know digital transmission of content is taking over our lives, and you know the whole narrative was also successfully built up, I would say, by Jio Cinema this time uh, because IPL and the whole thing of TV is dead. Now, a disclaimer here that I do not believe that TV is dead, or even that it is dying, right? I do. <laughs> so, uh, I, I believe that a few of my esteemed panelists may have a different point of view, and we will uh, listen to that also. So, you know, quickly, let me get to you, Ravish. You know, you had regional entertainment channels for Vicon 18. Now, your company, Sports Division, was the one who actually fueled this whole narrative in a way. Uh, they had showed TV, dark channel, with, and sent out a message that there is no light at the end of this tunnel. What is your view? You know, do you believe that TV is TV will become obsolete or dying, or it still has steam left in it? You know, Gaurav, that's a great question. I think if you go back to biology, any anything that doesn't evolve becomes extinct. TV has been constantly evolving, and if you look at sort of OTT coming in or digital coming in, or or sort of you know other mechanisms coming in, TV changing very rapidly. You know, so just the way OTT is evolving to sort of, you know, appointment viewing, 
releasing one episode every week. We are also evolving to a situation where content is faster, it's tighter, it's limited series. You know, series don't drag on forever, and if, if at all they do, there is always evolution of the characters. So, you know, there is a lot of give and take going on, a lot of learning going on, and COVID, in fact, actually opened up many different doors. You know, they brought in, you know, content which we which we'd never tried, you know, Korean content, dub, uh, exposure from, and especially since I look after Reason, I think Reason has now had a huge influence uh, on mainstream Hindi and, and other regions as well. So, you know, good content is now cutting across the globe, it is cutting across geographies, and I think that is absolutely amazing. So, far from saying TV is dead, I would say TV is alive, it is thriving, it is evolving, and it's a, it's a terrific place to be in, you know. True, true. Uh, very valid points. Now, you know, we also get confused because, I won't say confused, but uh, US, people are cord cutting. Yes, we, are, we also have some cord cutters here. Uh, but Western countries saw that because cable was very costly. TV is still the most affordable medium, if I'm correct, right, in India. And uh, India still considers TV, TV as an aspirational product. Now, although there are cord cutters and even cord nevers, I think that's the new word we are using, right? Uh, but their number is relatively small. Um, television remains most cost effective. And uh, I believe a uh, BART number last, uh, it says about 80 to 100 million TV homes are still, uh, households still don't have a TV. So there is a, there is a much headroom. But they, all of them may not actually buy a TV, might shift to their mobile devices. So uh, let me take this up with you, Anuj. Uh, given your experience, both the distribution side, as a broadcast side and uh, distribution side, how do you see this? You're, you're trying something uh, what Hulu has, right? In, uh, oh sorry, Roku. Sorry. So do you believe that OTT services are future of TV here or there is some way uh, merge service of TV and linear and digital is possible? Thanks, Gaurav. First of all, I have one uh, comment to make. This I've been now attending Fiki Frames for 15, 16, 20 years. And, and since 20 years, we've been talking about this headroom for 100 million homes. Because it's not happening, right? Whether they have already gone to mobile and doing, but we have been trying to move from 180, 200 million TV homes to 300 million for last 20 years, right? So that's my, you know. Uh, the second, I think, uh, I agree with you. I think there is a, so two comments here. One is that we discussed radio and, I think if you look at 15 years, no, probably 30 years back when satellite TV came in, before that it was only news or something, right? Uh, there was no digital medium, there was nothing else. The only thing that we created at that time, from a television perspective, was content. And I think even today, if there are 80 million content creators in this country, the first two and a half thousand or probably 20,000 are from film and TV. They are not going anywhere. So they are still the largest content creators in this country. So mediums may change, distribution may change. I don't look at, for example, 200 TV million homes. I can say potentially we are a 900 million TV, uh, small screen, laptops, iPads, and TV, right? So it's a huge market for content. And broadcasters make content. So I don't think that way is going anywhere. The way we think may evolve. The last point that you made on you know, a hybrid, I think hybrid is a necessity of TV. You cannot control digital because it is in your hands today. Right? You look at numbers that a YouTube gives, and Avinash will probably throw more light. There are 300 news channels on YouTube today. Right? Everybody is watching YouTube on their handle. It is not a market or it is not a platform that you can ignore as a content, even as a broadcast. So I think the opportunity for broadcasting business is huge. The traditional TV, yes, there are going to be challenges, whether it is cord nevers or cord cutters. I mean, you can't, in a market which is, you know, 50% is born after 1992, you can't expect youngsters today, irrespective of where they are, to behave or do things that their parents did. They will be different. We need, as an industry, to make sure that we create content for every segment, right? Broadcasters will take some segments, somebody else will take the other segment. So I think everything will sweetly coexist. The worry, I think, 
and like you said in terms of cable being the cheapest and you know in us it was expensive so it i think even that is being challenged today with the amount of content if i am spending 6 to 8 hours on a on a screen in a day there is a behavioral change in there right then i can question a 250 rupees also because i don't have time and i have youtubes and other things to watch right or i take one s so i think behavioral change is what is going to harm say television more than actual demand or or content uh, being produced or what very interesting point and i will uh, take it again later uh, but let me come to avinash uh, you know you recently picked up bala so secure slots on dd3 dish right and how do you see that linear tv space and within that pay and free tv is that you know what i believe 40% of news broadcasters viewership share comes from free dish uh yes as of now so do you see that any change happening there or you know uh, because earlier both nbf and nba said that we won't bid for new channels and as mr jenevi recently pointed out that three months two months back when the auction happened everyone actually eventually came so look uh, as, uh, <coughs> as uh, i'm also the president of the news broadcaster association so uh, we believe that in most people in india consume news on television still in the other room when gopal was speaking gopal said that about 120 million people who are watching on on cable and satellite the live tv there are only about a small percentage on top which are also subscribing to all the apps and watching through the content those ottds but majority of them are paying 150 rupees 200 rupees to watch tv now these are the consumers who are mostly getting all the news channels in the part of the free pack right as far as the fridish is concerned it's a very large amount of people in india who are consuming these contents through fridish so we are not denying the fact that the uh, fridish is not reaching to the consumer and we should not be there what we were fighting for is a pricing strategy so we are not against uh, uh, being on the fridish but we said that look uh, the economics does not make sense for us because on the other room when aritna akpal is sitting he'll say why not me you know so <laughs> so we were we were uh, we were fighting for that but also another point on which what uh, uh, anuj has also made see people are consuming content through all platforms a live tv will always be live okay once you are inside home you will always watch on the big screen because even today in india very few few of us who are sitting here maybe and we are a microscopic minority who can afford that amount of money for the bandwidth to watch a cricket match or to watch uh, a news entire bulletin on on youtube every single day it's not possible so once you go back to your home and television is actually a home habit i always say that you start watching television news once you raise family <laughs> because you have time you are worried about your kids future you want to you worry about your money uh, your security uh, health of the country and etc so you watch more and more news consumption happens when you start growing older and raise your family your fix education in united states these days it costs about a uh, five minutes class every year so you know so so these concerns actually bother you and uh, that's what to lead to news consumption so it will it will continue to happen respect to the platform but majority of the people in india are still consume news through television thank you uh, so sunil uh, as former head of bark you know you understand the measurement of tv inside and out and uh, uh, you know in a recent interview uh, the current bark chairman told me that you know india has 220 million tv households out of which 42 to 45 would be fpa uh, now this means 160 odd million pay tv homes right however ibf president earlier said that it's 108 210 million so somewhere number maybe lies somewhere in between right so what is your take and do you see that there's a possibility because anuj pointed out that the pay tv squeeze will continue to happen what is your view on this uh, and where lies the magic or you know for the broadcast sector in increase that number or not possible thanks so first of all i think we should stop bash- bashing up the television business okay they've done it too long and it survived it's evolved uh, it came into being to talk about agriculture weather forecasting 
and to bring families together, right? That's what it did. And it played a pivotal role. It continues to play that role. Now, there, there may be ways of watching that same content, whether you watch it later on YouTube, on OTT, or any other format on digital. But the fact is that the largest pool of content in India is primarily created for television viewing first, right? Then is cinema, which is movies created. And now they may be digital, but we know that that, that base is still small. I'm not going into user-generated content. That's different, right? So with TV being created for the largest, the largest pool of content being created on a daily basis, okay, there's even now a show running in its seventh year on Hindi television. So that tells you the power of their medium. There are economic challenges, whether they get their fair share from pay or they get their fair share from cable or they run free over there. Uh, measurement needs to be addressed to look at both one who's watching the same show on TV or watching it elsewhere. And the recent uh, play out, which is taking place vis-a-vis -vis IPL is interesting because it shows obviously there is, there is a rivalry amongst both those platforms, but it's the same content, right? Okay, so that's really interesting. And I don't think that habit's going to change. Maybe different kinds of people will play. I think the challenges that the industry faces is it's not coming together as an ecosystem. Okay, what drives television? Number one, advertising. Number two, cable subscription. Or DTS, any form of subscription, right? Not everybody gets a share of subscription, but anyone who's a broadcaster gets some share of the advertising revenue. Why is this ecosystem of content, the advertising community, the broadcaster not sitting down together and saying, how do we make this more interesting and grow faster? Because digital will eat up, eat up into that share, right? We have seen categories walk out of this. And why is that conversation not happening? Why is there nobody sitting there saying, let's address this and let's make this work bigger and better? Let's get younger people, because when I grew up, I watched Boniyat, I watched Ramayan, watched all of that. Now, people may not watch this. Young people may not watch this on TV today, right? How do you get them then to work for you and create content for people? Because we think people who watch television are sitting in some very remote village with, you know, one solar lamp running out there, which is not true. In Bombay, in Mumbai City too, right here in Pawai, there are enough homes watching TV. So we first need to feel proud about the business and how it's done and where it's going. Yes, it's slowed down in pace. But I am bullish about television. Thank you. Uh, you know, great point there, bullish about television. Now, uh, Ravish, coming to you, on the content part of it, you know, uh, yesterday somebody shared a meme with me how on a prime time show, the protagonist turned into a spider. Or uh, there was this guy who turned into a Hulk, Desi Hulk, Desi Hulk. I don't want to take the name of the uh, channel or show, but this is the prime time we are showing. Okay. Now, there's another uh, thought which is like, if this is what people are watching, we are serving. So it's a bit, lot of chicken and egg, right? Uh, is it people are watching, that is why you are serving, or is it you are serving, that is why people are watching? I think, I think it's a little of both and a little of neither. You know, it's tough to answer these. You know, historically, we've seen crime, fantasy, supernatural, horror. These are all genres that attract people, right? And historically, you've done them at late night. But with the coming of sort of, you know, OTT, how come no one's wanting a finger at Stranger Things, yeah? So you again have the same made-up monsters, like, you know, chasing people. And there is an appetite for content. I mean, like you said earlier, I think in this panel only, you need to serve content for everybody at certain times of the day. And that's what television is. So I see nothing wrong with doing it. At the face value, it seems a little ludicrous to have people morph into sort of witches or spiders. But end of the day, it does fulfill sort of a certain need yeah? or a certain kind of thrill people get out of watching it. Otherwise, you know, serving the same kitchen politics day in and day out, how far is that going to get you? Yeah, our primary purpose is entertainment. Let's not lose sight of that. Occasionally, we will experiment and go into areas to test the waters and see how well it works or doesn't work, you know? Like I said earlier, the audiences are evolving, we are evolving, and the whole content ecosystem is also taking cognizance of what they are seeing and doing outside of television too. Yeah, so we are just trying to get on top of that curve as well. No, agreed. But is it because uh, somewhere viewership 
uh, measurement also uh, kind of responsible because I believe most of the measurement that is happening is happening for the NCCS B, C, D, right? Not the A, because and because you are not serving the kind of content maybe that I want to watch. That is why also I am moving away. Is it? Uh, you know, at the end of the day, let's face it. A lot of people in the higher SCCs are never the core television audience. So when we talk about people like us, or people sitting in this room, I would argue you aren't the audience to begin with. So your taste matter little to me, because you were never there. You know, you are the one who is consuming global content. You are the one sort of you know talking about the next episode of Citadel. You know, a day before it comes out. You are not a hardcore TV watcher. So ergo, why should I give up the vast need of the majority of the audience whom I am serving and cater to a small sliver, which I can do anyway on my broadcasting OTT platforms where the bulk of the content residing is television content. Yeah, so this allows me to do both. Okay, okay. Very good. So Anuj, uh, coming back to you on the technology side, how is that going to impact the broadcast sector? In a way, uh, what if you can also suggest what bundling, right? OTT, now a lot of people, even Harit uh, is looking at bundling services. A lot of other players are looking at because OTT, when we're talking about subscription, is still very small, right? So is bundling the answer? Is bundling with FTA is the answer? I think all, uh, look at the way uh, market has evolved, right? I mean, uh, first channel was ZTV, right? And we expanded in 90s rapidly. The growth was on because there was a cable guy who was stringing wires and was willing to give you those 10, 15, and then at some point, you know, fly on net 600, whatever that is. I, I think the fundamental from a consumer perspective will remain. And I, mean, I think the new report of ENY is also talking about this thing that you talked about, that the actual number of, uh, and I think Gopal also mentioned, that even if you look at the top OTT, right, the actual subscription, forget the telco bundles, is only 20 million. Yeah. We are discussing here, can we do 100 million, 200 million? This is 20 million and probably large part of his individuals. So it's not even homes. If I divide that by five, it's we are discussing four versus 100, 200, 300, whatever, right? So I think the OTT is the growth. The, the thing is that there is a demand. Uh, to Ravish's point, the advantage that Digital has it that it doesn't get confined by those three hours of prime time, right? Which is where it mis misses out on certain segments of it. Digital gives you that. But the bundling of TV and OTT gives you the opportunity to actually reach out to everybody. And hence, the you know, the growth of the, sec the sector itself will probably depend on that. I cannot stop today, for example, people buying TV, right? You go to any any store today, forget Bombay, let's go to a smaller market like Gorakhpur or even a smaller market than Gorakhpur. Most TVs being sold are smart TVs, right? When you buy a smart TV, there will be four or five out of those smart TV buyers who will probably never use smart TV for smart TV. But the five will. And that itself is a big market. So if you don't create product for that, they will end up you watching, either they will kill the linear television because they're suddenly are only happy with YouTube, or they will say, let's create a bundle for linear and OTT together. Let people decide today on what they want to watch. I think, and with, you know, we are probably in early days of 5G, but let's look at 24 months from today. That itself will probably give an option for people to not worry about the bandwidth as Avinash talked about. Today, the biggest challenge is even your, uh, you know, security guard, if he's watching a movie, it has to end at one hour because most mobile customers are today at one or one and a half GB a day. That's the highest selling pack. So you can't watch content for three hours, like he said. Right? You can't watch a uh, movie also. So forget watching a full IPL match. But there is a there is a snappy content being consumed. And I think with 5G, that will change a lot in next but we're probably 24 months away for it. So I think the tech will not, you know, the only difference I have with Ravi, he said there's TV as well. Unfortunately, no, TV has not evolved. The only tech thing changed from SD to HD. And if you ask me, HD is the biggest failure in our life. There is only one platform which has 60% of HD customers. 
एच डी इज द बिगेस्ट फेलियर दैट दी प्रॉब्लम द सेक्टर हैज वी नेवर इवॉल्व वी क्रिएटेड लॉर्ड ऑफ कॉन्टेंट एंड वी क्रिएटेड लॉर्ड ऑफ चैनल बट डिट कंज्यूमर अडॉप्टेड नो सो यू हैव टू एक्सेप्ट दैट इट डेंट वर्क टेलीविजन सेगमेंट अदरवाइज एक्सेप्ट फॉर डिजिटल एंड नाउ ओ टी टी हैज नॉट एक्चुअली सीन अ लॉर्ड ऑफ टेक इम्प्रूवमेंट फ्रॉम अ ट्रेडिशनल डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन परस्पेक्टिव सो आई थिंक नाउ इज द टाइम वेन whether it's the hybrid box or bundling of linear and all and it it will happen because the consumer wants it so i believe uh, last numbers which i saw 75 million hd tv homes right out of the total hd penetration that broadcasters get paid for i mean things may have changed in the last i don't think they have was about 10 or 12 million exactly. out of which between two dth players it is some 90%, 90%. market true true exactly That, that's interesting point, but let's get to the other end of the spectrum, the FTA again. Uh, Mr. Dwivedi, do you believe FTA is fulfilling its purpose? One, big four networks who used to be dish to run catch-up TV channels, and once the NTO came into effect, they withdrew the channels. Right. So, what is the future for FTA? What is the future for public broadcasting? What happens to Doordarshan, your content? Well, as far as uh Future of FTA is concerned. I don't think there's any reason for concern. Uh, the four groups that you talked about, they are here. They are large. They have a very substantial market share. Definitely, we'd like to have them back as well. But uh, they are not the entire market. There's a very large number of uh, content producers. There's a very large number of uh, uh, people and organizations who are producing great content. and we are also seeing uh, the expansion in terms of uh, the nature of that content which which probably did not have the space uh, uh, to be carried so suddenly you find that there is a very large number of uh, bhojpuri channels for example and there would be all the, the entire uh, channel space on uh, previously was taken up by various others then uh, you know nature of bolts of that team uh, somebody moves out somebody else comes in and now i mean we are all enjoying what you know the reverse is happening you know we are enjoying a bhojpuri commentary on ipl so so you know these things evolve over a period of time and i i don't think there's any reason to worry as far as that is concerned my bigger concern is uh, in terms of uh, the content that we are putting out and i speak not only for doordarshan but i think the entire content uh, industry in a manner of speaking and this is of course my personal perspective that uh, we are probably not experimenting enough not experimenting enough in the sense that while there are a certain uh, number of uh, content producers who are coming up with absolutely brand new content uh, you know in terms of uh, conceptualization in terms of ideas subjects but there are also there's also a very heavy pressure on uh, many of us that this is the kind of program which is actually a big hit at this point of time so why don't we make a clone of it so if if that happens then over a period of time everything boils down to the same level and then you don't you don't really see a differentiation from one uh, channel to the other I think one of the strengths of Doordarshan, if you uh, recall, and you know, some of you, the people from my age group, see many of these youngsters who wouldn't have seen that content. But if you if you start uh, uh, rattling out the top programs on Doordarshan, you know, the 80s, 90s, early 2000s, you found that there was pretty much no genre which was not covered. You know, I mean, you had you had you had family dramas, you had mythology, you had. horror you had kids you know kids programs you know you had mogli and jungle book and you know jungle jungle baat cheli chali and all that so we had we had uh, pretty much the widest range of content but uh, in this in this uh, focus on only profitability we are probably not experimenting enough in terms of uh, bringing Uh, the widest possible range of content to the consumers or we are telling them that okay we are going to have only this kind of content stay with us if you want to see this if you want to see something else go elsewhere we don't care now is that the right approach to take i don't know i don't know but as far as we are concerned at doordarshan so uh, 
uh, we will in any case uh, attempt and keep attempting to cover the widest possible range of subjects uh, that could be brought to the audience but i think uh, at an at an at an industry level at a sector level <coughs> all the content producers also possibly need to start thinking in terms of what is the kind of content what what is the nature of the discourse that we want to bring uh, to the audience because it cannot always be reactive i mean the you know in 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 course of uh, the earlier sessions here and possibly over the next few days also we'll keep talking about being an aggregation of uh, the creative community uh, you know we are all creators we are all creative people whether it is tv whether it is cinema whether it is animation this and that and the other but if we call ourselves creative then we need to also be proactive creative by definition cannot be reactive so if we do not keep introducing something new and something positive which which leads to people not only enjoying what they are watching but also stimulating thoughts in them kya ho raha hai hamare ghar mein kya ho raha hai hamare desh mein kya ho raha hai hamari duniya mein kya ho raha hai if we are not doing that then as creators we are all not fulfilling our duty so if i may you know act as devil's advocate you know i used to watch alif leela and gurdhi and lot of content right but today watching doordarshan is not cool anymore right today so much of content is available but even then if you are covering the breadth of content why is it that people are not watching i think that's a fair question and uh, there there've been uh, legacy reasons uh, to uh, this this particular situation where dd is not cool again so we are we're working on that and i think uh, four months down the line you'll see it Uh, ramesh i would like to you to chip in on uh, uh, you said very made a very good point of channels or not not having the breadth of content not experimenting enough do you agree with that or because you know doordarshan is like a like a maybe a general news uh, or general newspaper you have everything whereas channels are becoming more genre specific either it's general entertainment or movies or music or kids so is this because of the linear uh, kind of uh, format or there is any other reason to it i think you already answered my question for me you know so think of any market evolution you start segmenting your segments get smaller and more defined and therefore you have a chance to now play in multiple segments See, at the end of the day we must realize prime time is finite right so for all of us here and how much content can you serve to how many people within that same prime time is a challenge so if i want to take do kids content they may not be watching at the same time at least i hope not as adults right so they should be in bed by then or they should be out studying or they should be out playing uh, so different people have different needs i think this is a logical form of segmenting markets offering sort of you know a more targeted offering and a wider offering to a smaller audience so yes i think the irony is we are still called dcs which is dental entertainment channel we are not dental anymore yeah so we have largely become a so platform you know we are used for movies and and we are used for sort of reality shows um, yeah that's typically what a dc will serve up it's no longer the d right so go, going back to the days of doordarshan i totally agree with your view you know that yes you offered a complete platter you offered a thali right now it's more of a specialized a la carte that you are doing yeah <laughs> but a tasty a la carte huh? <laughs> thank you uh, sunil i will come to you uh, uh, ravish also spoke about uh, personalization right uh, so with the increasing demand for personalized content how can tv broadcasting remain relevant and additionally what impact will advertising have on the future of tv broadcasting see i don't know technologically how this will change but the one thing that television needs to do is to choose a sharp position so doordarshan was the best programmer in this country right that era may have passed because today there are some what 600 or other channels in this country of different kinds so how do you get focused around this and how do you build that unique position so i think tv has to reinvest in understanding who's my audience they have to understand technological possibility right so hd fame they supply a lot of content now say on digital much of it is free right and if it's free then what you earn from there's always going to be that much less because the first viewing is then on that screen over there 
and they need to choose who they are for and who they are not for. You can't be for everybody. What you have to appreciate in India, the middle is big. The middle has actually got much, much bigger. The rich have got richer, okay? But the middle is really big. And if you're catering for the middle, even there, there are big differences which are taking place. Not just language. Language is just one aspect of it. Because you can create the same show in, in multiple languages, right? I don't think the broadcasting business is grappling with their problem as well as it could. We have, what, close to 300 news channels, right? Now, you can you imagine anyone who is giving an interview is not going to repeat it 300 times. So somebody is going to lose out on it, right? Because they're going to be in a conference like this, so there's going to be multiple mics. I mean, Australia, Canada have all invested in one mic, one feed goes out, play the way it is. You don't have that clutter over there. So I think it's important for this industry to innovate itself. And the only people who can innovate this industry are themselves. Very valid point. But then you said 300 news channels coming to viability of news. A lot of channels are not because of the, from the business point of view also, right? So Avinash, coming to you on the news part, one is of course how are you as a network and news as a segment is taking this challenge of uh, consumption, digital versus TV versus linear uh, versus free. And how are you prepared for if there's a shift or if even if there's not a shift? So uh, as far as we are concerned, we moved to digital uh, about four years ago, and there are a lot of digital native content that we serve on that. Uh, we have six news channels, which is broadcast on TV, which runs on digital also. Apart from that, there are two in South Indian languages, which we stream, which is not on television uh, in the linear format. Uh, over 100 million unique audience that we have. So it's quite a vibrant platform that we have. So, And I think most broadcasters have also simultaneously moved into these two areas. The problem of what my colleagues were talking about on the dais is, is I want to address that. Okay? There are two issues here. One is what is the industry structure, the way we operate, the incentive for the industry to, to create good content. Ask, if I do a quick poll, how many of you are happy with the news that you see today? How many of you are angry with what news comes on television? So the problem is that I'll give you an example, quick example. MP LAD scheme, and Gauraji as a bureaucrat, he will tell you that MP LAD scheme from Rajiv Gandhi onwards, every prime minister said it's a den of corruption, right? So we decided to expose that. Okay? We did a sting operation, five different member of parliament from different, all, all from all political spectrum, okay, came on camera and said, Pasalelo, Pasalelo, etc. right? We started running the promo that we are going to expose this in the prime time. My rivals came to know, and they did a show. Kitne aadmi the? Ye kaise likha gaya tha? Shole mein. Aur wo Gabbar Singh chalta kaise tha? The rating of that show was almost five times of my rating. Now, what is the incentive for you to? Because advertisers are going to pay you for that. And what Gaurav is saying, not every job that we'll do for money, but finally, as it's a business house, we want to solve the problem of society. Profitably, we are not a uh, NGO or a charity organization. So the incentive structure for for this medium is 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 very very bad currently, and that is why there are 300 channels. Many of them I don't know why they exist. Uh, uh, what is their purpose? How they are getting funded? I can safely tell you. You can look at the balance sheet of the top five broadcaster, and you'll know how news businesses are run. Uh, I mean, how difficult it is for us to run day to day operation and still being truthful to the news that I give you. So. Uh, if you want a good news uh, uh, or a better news item, uh, it is important that you start paying for it. Currently, no one pays for the TV that they watch. They are all the money that goes to the platform operators, not to us. So that's the kind of news that you'll get. <laughs> so exactly. So that's the question. How would you get people to pay for the news? So I'll tell you. Uh, look at New York Times, for example. I'm giving the print example. New York Times has two, two or three different models. If you want, if you can't afford uh, a yearly subscription, you can still go to the nearest Home Depot and buy one copy and read it that day, right? So you can still pay three dollars and read that particular. And if you, you can afford, you can take an annual subscription. Uh, uh, there is a there is a movement all over the world now uh, through NGOs saying that news being paid is killing the democracy. 
because not many people are able to access what news they must see, right? Uh, so there is the both sides of the problem. What we are saying is that the basic, uh, basic principle of you are reading someone's article, a lot of research work has gone. If you, have, if you are seeing a video where a lot of hours of work that has gone into it, producing, taking risk of life, going there and shooting it, why do you want to consume it free? It's not your fertilizer subsidy that you must get it, right? And the, the problem is at our end also, we broadcasters have not been able to take that leap. Sunil has been a great advocate for this in the industry, saying that why don't you guys are going pay? And uh, the problem is that if, if we go pay, because what he's saying, most of us are carrying the same interview in 300 channels, who is going to pay you? So it's a chicken and egg story. You have to invest in the content. Do we have the enough incentive in the system to invest that money in the content? And if you invest it, we don't know how the market is going to react because somebody is going to come and replace you. Uh, like Satyanu Chaitanya program, which was largely a news program, ran on an entertainment channel, and uh, it was a huge success. I can tell you the same Satyanu Chaitanya. We tried on the Star News earlier, and it bombed because we did not have money. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So good content on news television is very, very difficult to deliver unless there are incentives around regulators, uh, broadcast operators, and trading agencies. All three of them has to work together. Uh, Sunil, coming back to you on advertisers, you know, uh, we are also seeing a trend where advertisers, or maybe, again, uh, the narrative is going that way, that advertisers are willing to pay more on digital, or rather, inking towards digital. Is it true? So they can link it to commerce, right? And that's where they're headed. Globally, and it's getting to be true in India, significant automotive business is now done digital, right? Which is the first sale process begins over there. So for new cars being launched a few years back, it was the double or triple spread of Times of India, as an example, right? And then it was large flashes on news channels. Then it became on GC and sports. Today it's moved digital because you can, you can integrate commerce over there, right? And that's how it works. Television does not have their play of integrating commerce to it. There have been a lot of attempts, okay? A lot of the digital players do have commerce-linked uh, options over there, but I don't think that's a big enough business. And young marketeers are now being increasingly trained to look at ROI, programmatic, whatever words you want to use, right, are increasingly being trained over there. And earlier, Avtar, the training was all around imagery and how you created campaigns around imagery, right? Today, it's become a ruthless commercial world just as well. So there can be options on television to integrate content. We see that during cricket. We see that during reality shows. We see that during quiz shows. If it's not too much in your face, it's a tough one, right? Because somewhere somebody has to stand back and say, I am going to stick to six minutes of commercial for 30 minutes or 12 minutes, and I'm going to stay there. Someone has to learn to say no, right? And that's when you start the act of walking it. So that's something that discipline brings. And wherever there has been discipline, those markets have benefited. But the reality is, over time, the advertising flow into television is at high risk of decreasing. So what are we going to do about taking it back? You know, you can't wish it that it will happen. So that remains an unanswered question. Uh, uh, Ravish, would you like to uh, take that? No, I fully agree with what Sunil is saying. But I think the question is intrinsic to the medium. Uh, it's very difficult to sort of, you know, target messaging, customized messaging with a call to action to specific audiences with a mass media product, right? So what television can continue to do, which it does very well, is it gives you the biggest bang for your buck. It gives you mass awareness. Uh, when you're launching a new product, you know, you, 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 television is the first place you will go to. But if you're trying to do a test market, if you're trying to gauge a new variant, if you are trying to gauge the efficacy of a commercial offer, well, digital, I think, does a far better job of that, right? So technologically, I think I'll flip it over to Anuj uh, in terms of, you know, are they, are they mechanisms which will evolve to get us there? I'm sure they will. I'm not aware of them yet. But then again, there's a lot happening on the back end, right? So Anuj, if I can just request you to sort of weigh in on this in terms of, you know, making TV potentially more targeted or as targeted as digital, do you see it happening? Do you at all? Do you see it happening in little doses? Uh, what's your take? I think like Sunil said, there have been experiments on, on that in the past, but uh, 
with the new tech, yes, it is possible. The TV commerce is probably one of the things that will take off in the next. Uh, but you remember that bandwidth issues, other issues are all getting related, you know, kind of getting convoluted on that. But um, and then the logistics of it and all. But I do see that happening. You know, there have been experiments, successful experiments on reality television interaction on on the mobile, more or less mobile, right? And that probably it it didn't get anywhere in terms of this, but I think that's what will probably happen at some point of time, very soon. You will see when, especially the broadcaster OTT ecosystem, should look at it very closely on how I can have you know different endings to the same program. There is, there is no harm in doing right. People vote for a different ending, and it can be very exciting. So all those things I think will happen, and then will lead to probably commerce. Technologically, all this is possible. I think my Take on Gaurav and two things. One is to what uh, Divyaji said on, on free dish. I think the biggest success story of free dish is that Alu Arjun is the biggest star in UP and Bihar, right? That is the strength of the platform and the reach that it can give. You know, apart from uh, the challenges of 40% and uh, share and all that. And I think the other thing that I want to uh, just add to what uh, you know uh, Avinash said. That because there is no monetization possible, and there are now so many people that, as an industry, we can now. I don't think we can come to the. You cannot get 300 channels in this room and say, "Let's decide. All of us will go pay." It's not going to happen, right? And then there are independent news content creators today. They're not even channels, but they're being watched. So I think the industry now, we as a sector, we have now crossed that. Um, it's not possible for us to change the structure. I think we have to innovate within this and think how we monetize it better so that we can keep creating better content. Otherwise, I don't think there is any changing the structure of the sector today is not going to be easy. I think uh, now our time's up. So last, you know, one sentence each of you: SWOT for TV, strengths, weakness, opportunities, threats. Let's start with Sunil and then. It's got the audience base. Sharpen the position. Don't scare. Don't get scared to take risks, and make a lot more money. I'm going to quote from a campaign. Mm -hmm. Kal bhi, aaj bhi, kal bhi. <laughs> See, television is very simple. It's a superstar blockbuster business. As long as you're creating superstar and doing blockbuster content. It will always work, and regulators need to actually help us uh, reach to those. Uh, uh, I think it's at 120 million is probably the largest today, right? It is not growing, so we are all worried. It is not dying because at 110 million also is going to be the largest. Even at 80 million, it will be the largest, both in terms of revenue. And in terms of size and reach, so I don't think television needs to worry. In, it just needs to innovate, both on the content and distribution, on how to make sure that you catch hold of the different audiences, whether it is NCCA or the younger audiences. I think that's where broadcasting ecosystem needs to look at itself as a content creator and see how I grow from my base to reach out to everybody. But TV will remain and is not going anywhere. Only to TV. I would, uh, in fact, what my friend Avinash was saying, the news channels are here, digital pe bhi ja rahe hain, app bhi hai, sab kuch hai. We need to stop thinking of uh, broadcasting only in terms of TV. We need to start thinking in terms of uh, you know our all. Each one of us, the favorite word that we keep repeating, content. Create good content and find the right way to write the reach the right audience. If it goes to the mass medium, to TV, it's linear, so be it. If we find that it needs to be repurposed and packaged, repackaged, and sent it over an app, so be it. But uh, let's just keep creating good content. The audiences are not going anywhere. Great. Thank you. Uh, it's been great talking to all of you. And while content is king, I think distribution is the queen. So let us find our consumers. Thank you. Thanks, Atan. And you have been a lovely audience. Thank you.